Hey Leader Tribe, Dr. Rob here. I'm so excited about this lesson. I asked if we could, if I could stand up when I was filming it. This is such good stuff. It's something that we can all do. This is week three out of four as we're looking at the Harvard Business Review study where they encouraged uh, CEOs, the people who were uh, applying for the jobs, to figure out the people who were looking at them, what did they actually hire them for versus the people who ended up being great CEOs, what did they do differently from the rest? What they wanted to find out is the things they were being hired for, the reasons they were being hired, did those really translate to becoming a good CEO? And what they discovered is no. Uh, for example, uh, CEOs who projected a bunch of self-confidence, they were about twice as likely to get hired as the CEOs who did not do that. However, it had no ramifications whatsoever if you had a projected self-confidence when you were leading as a CEO. Now, they're not saying walk around and go, man, I'm nothing. No, uh, you know what? Projecting self-confidence isn't what runs a great company. You know what it does? Getting the results and those have to do with behaviors. So we're talking about the four superior behaviors that outstanding CEOs have. These were the guys at the top of the heap rather than those who had ended up losing their job. Hey, in week one, as you'll remember, we learned that they make decisions quickly and with conviction. They'd rather make a bad decision than no decision at all because at least a bad decision, you can change it. So if you're paralyzed, you're not very good at making decisions, uh, you'll really wanna go back and look at week number one. Hey, uh, second week, we looked about uh, where people engaged and how they engaged with shareholders. Remember this? Towards the results, not just towards their efforts. If you don't know what I'm talking about, make sure to jump back and watch last week. And secondly, they engaged with the team. And then third, they engaged in conflict. They weren't argumentative, but they would say, hey, I disagree. What about this? And they would always keep drilling down, drilling down till they could get to the, the very best opinion or the best decision. Now, this week, it's going to get really good. You ready for this? It has to do with the people who were the most flexible, the ones who could adapt. Uh, I think they call it adapting proactively in the Harvard Business Review article. But what I wanted to tell you is you got to be flexible. You got to be flexible. Let me tell you why. I'm going to look at my notes real quick to make sure I get the three things that I really, really wanted to share with you. Oh, yeah. And I forget. I wanted to share with you something they found out in the study as well. Um, first of all, you know something that they discovered in this study? Um, of the people who ended up being the best CEOs, 45% uh, of all of them had had some career threatening uh, problem before. They had been fired from a job or they had done something that was a huge failure and lost their company a lot of money. And so when you think, uh, man, all the mistakes I've made, I could never uh, operate at those levels or be the best leader that I could be. And I want to say, are you kidding? You've got a better education than most people. And so don't worry about failures because those people ended up were the most adaptable. They were the most flexible because they had learned from their failures and they weren't going to make the same mistake, uh, mistake over and over again. First thing that we learned from the article is that uh, the CEOs themselves, when they were asked, what do you believe makes you an effective CEO? What they would say is being adaptable is being flexible, is learning from their mistakes. They took, how did they do that? They took a long-term view. Hey, I blew it here. Uh, that was really bad. They could go um, point by point telling you what happened, but it was always like, here's what we learned. Here's what we learned. Here's what we learned. On the other hand, the, the uh, CEOs who didn't make it, the ones who ended up losing their jobs, they considered all setbacks as failures. Oh, we really failed there. CEOs who made it, they didn't look at it just as a failure. They looked at it as opportunities to learn. Here's what we learned. And so here's how we were able to change. Well, here's the problem. If you're not flexible, if you're not adaptable, if you do things the same way over and over again, once it fails, you've got nothing else to turn to. But if you're in that growth mindset, if you're always looking for what's next, man, it's going to help you. It's going to be just fantastic. Uh, the way that they found out that those CEOs did it best is they always took the long term view up to 50% of their time was on long-term goals and long-term direction. Well, here's why they found out that could help them be adaptable and flexible. Think about this. Is if a major crisis hits and you've got to make a decision right away, you don't have that many resources. You don't have the opportunity to call a bunch of friends, to do some research on it, to, to uh, reach out to your network of peers. You've got to get in there and make a decision. However, 
If you've had that long-term view, what happens is some of those things that are coming down the pipeline that are going to be upsetting to your business or upsetting to the way that uh, the, the sales environment is, it doesn't matter what it is. If you're taking that long-term view, you can see those things further out in advance and that allows you to be more flexible because you still have more options. Hey, finally in this area, I want to tell you about my friend John Maxwell. Uh, in traveling with Don and uh, John and, and seeing him speak in front of so many uh, CEO groups when I was with Equip or with the John Maxwell Leadership Foundation, uh, one of the things he would say all the time is, I'm continually reinventing myself. He talked about that a lot in his book, uh, Intentional Living, I believe. And he wrote two books that prove it was true. Uh, one of them's called uh, Failing Forward. And he says, yeah, I fail all the time, but I always want to learn from it. I always want to do better the next time. And then I, uh, eight or 10 years later, when he wrote his second book on failure, I love this one. Sometimes you win, sometimes you learn. That's his attitude. Keep learning, keep moving forward, do whatever it's going to take. Even if you've had a huge career, career upsetting uh, catastrophe in your life, don't worry about it. Learn from it. Hey guys, the best CEOs leading the big companies it's not like they're rocket scientists, but they do some things right and they get it right over and over again. Number one, they make quick decisions. Number two, they stay engaged with their bosses, with the board of directors and with their investors. And then they stay engaged with their employees, but they're doing that just to understand people not to be liked. They don't waste any energy on wanting to be liked. And then they engage in conflict as well, always trying to get to the bottom, get to the truth, make sure that they're getting the best information. And then they remain flexible adaptable. They can change. They will change. They must change because that's how they're going to grow. Hey, next week, we're going to finish this series four out of four. But before then, uh, jump down and download this week's freebie. And it has to do with how do you, how do I reinvent ourselves? How do we think that way? How can we continually uh, be on a growth curve and preparing for the future? It's going to be a fun little download for you. It's not going to take very much time, but it will give you some ideas, something that you can kind of get into yourself. Oh, we just heard our little dog barking. Hey, and uh, the last thing I wanted to tell you this week is if you're not a member of Leader Tribe, if somebody else uh, showed you this video or if you just ended up on the website, make sure to join the tribe. When you do, I send you all kinds of uh, free downloads. I give you video lessons every week. It's my pri privilege, my pleasure to have so many engaged, growing leaders and to be able to work with them on a weekly basis. Hey, thanks so much. This is Dr. Rob. We'll see you next week.